Hey folks, this is Richard Burtis from Datacom Christchurch, New Zealand uh, with a quick tutorial overview of um, a demonstration app that will help you create uh, resumes or CVs. Um, in, in my role, we respond to a lot of um, requests for proposals, so RFPs, and we often need to quickly spin up a, um, a bio or a list of professional skills um, in, a, in a short deadline. Um, and it's good to have a some sort of database that holds all your uh, previous uh, resumes or allow you to copy resumes and take someone else's um, in your team and modify that a little bit if you need to to help with um, get the RFP through the door. So that this app allows um, a team, um, it could go wider but the layout at the moment is, is better for a team, um, to go in add their own um, information about themselves and then it will create um, SharePoint list items to hold all of the metadata around each of the various elements um, within the CV template or the resume template that we're putting together. Plus it will also create um, a PDF. Um, we can do Word as well, but this this demonstration does a PDF um, of um, your your resume uh, uh, in, a, in a branded method so you can attach it to the back of um, an RFP. Um, if you did it with Word, you could use a Word template um, and then someone else could come in and, and edit um, the Word content or copy and paste it into um, a master document, but um, you could easily do it from a PDF as well for the way, the way this was set up. So a quick demonstration of how it all works. Um, simple search um, here to find users. Oops. Um, and then a little image of, of you uh, from your Office 365 users connection. Um, with a date when it was last changed. I've been working on this one today. So um, in New Zealand, it's the 11th. Um, and it's not always the 11th in other parts of the world uh, when it's our 11th. Um, and then I can go and I can view um, the PDF of the the CV. So this gets created dynamically from um, the Parrot. Um, let's close that, sorry. Um, or I can clone it. So if I clone my um, copy of that I get um, another version, uh, so I can take what I'd already created and and and, and go in and again, and it's exactly the same um, content, especially using the SharePoint um, and Flow connector to copy item um, or get item and then create item, which is similar to copy um, uh, copying it, but just basically you're, you're getting it and and you're creating rather than copying, but same sort of thing. Um, and then I can update it. So any any of these I can go in and change. So if I want to. Um, update this, the copy that I just made. I can go and let's scroll up, sorry. Now this is using um, th the preview um, Power App control for rich text, um, which we use, which makes um, your layout um, for this sort of setup ideal, because I can put in rich text bullet points and things for various zones in my um, my, my resume that I want to put together. Um, let's change that to demo example. for fun. Um, I'll keep my email address in my dev tenant there because that'll use user profile to get it and I can change here. Um, oh, let's spell it right. There we go. I'm throwing the gauntlet down to the, my fellow Power Apps champions out there. So Keith and Anton waiting to see your clips um, when you can get them. Just putting it out there. So this item is particularly special. Um, but basically what I can do is I can go into each of these various elements. So I've got four, um, four of the rich text uh, HTML type fields. Um, and then I can save the item. And if I save it, that will just create a copy of the document um, and put that into the document library. And if I want to save and send, um, that will um, do the same process and also send me a copy of that resume, which can be useful. Um, if I click that one, sorry, um, to show you how. So that's been taken. Um, see that the name's changed. It's all refreshed. Um, I could put a time on there, but people don't tend to change more than once a day, generally with resumes. Um, and let's just oh, click clear, reset that that field, um, get everybody else back. Um, if I jump into mail. Um, in Office 365, so Brooke helped me make um, the workflow of uh, 
um, this particular um, app. And I haven't really made a very special email. Um, um, so that's my previous one. Sorry, I was a little quick demo. And I should have another one coming through here. It takes, we've got to go through a process of building um, the item. That might take a second or two to get created. So that's five. Okay, with a quick pause on my um, PowerPoint uh, recording, I've got my one at 851. So I'll click on that one. Uh, expand that. I'm going to get the recording. I've been doing a few demos. You could change the name of the file to, to actually be more relevant. Uh, this one's just taken the ID of the item. And there we go, Power Apps Maker, uh, first YouTube clip for 2019 and competitive YouTube tutorials. All right. So let's get out of that. Um, and let's show you the flow of how this all works. So, oops. so to run through, yeah, you've got um, all that ability to do it. And then the flow, there's two types of flows I'm running. I'm running a flow for the cloning of um, a resume. And I'm also, I want to update and I can save. Um, so I jump into the Brooks one. We've left this open so that people can come in and update other people's. There's not much content in Brooks. Uh, but if I can save and send it or so those two run um, the same flow but based on the item that I click on it'll send a metadata tag to either send the email or not so let's look at um, how the flows are running so basically we've, the trigger is SharePoint um, and we're running some concurrent steps just to get a bunch of content that we use um, inside of the um, the document creation. So we, we are using the OneDrive connector to generate um, the actual file that becomes the PDF and we use um, a variable to create um, all of um, like an HTML table. So basically a big big old table of all of the elements in a big table laid out um, the way we want it to be presented and then we use OneDrive again to actually generate um, the file and then I also copy it into SharePoint as well. So these particular items we've got in the OneDrive, the logos, um, the different little icons. So the, these are the, um, if I jump into, oh, have I got my logo PDF? Sorry, go back here um, to show you what each of these elements look like. So to view um, the PDF. So those little icons there, so this is the logo, the email icon, the phone icon, and the website icon of those little variables along the top um, and then we use them a little string just to get that information so we can put it into um, a variable that I can then put inside this master so it's, it's getting the, the SharePoint item created some variables adding those variables into a larger variable um, set which is this guy which is an expand which is a string type um, which is basically an HTML page um, with some CSS if we need it, and we don't necessarily need it, but it's good to have it because that means we can lay things out and put borders and shading if we need to um, within our, our PDF. And so the various elements of uh, the width of um, the div that's going to hold um, the initial content, so up in this area, that div there, the title, the logo, the div, and then these particular zones um, inside of the app. So what you can do when you put a variable and you can obviously put lots of CSS in which you have there, but then further down um, under the head of your HTML section, you can create your body size A4 for your, um, uh, your PDF um, and then start putting in table information. So table header, um, that's my name, that's my job title, that's the logo which you defined as the variable um, at the top of the flow, um, but defining here the height and width of it. Um, and then close that table out, start a new table um, with all my contact information in, and again using the variables uh, that we defined as those, those images. And then the information from um, the SharePoint list that we create um, to grab the, the, all the various components. And then exactly the same. Now, because I'm using the rich text um, preview control uh, from Power Apps, it's really, really easy just to drop that into. Um, a paragraph, or sorry, paragraph um, section in my table here, and it will con continue to use all of the same formatting that exists um, from 
the Power App. So there's bullet points, um, bolding, underlining. They will all can come through exactly as I want them. So it's a really, really good control. Um, thanks, Power Apps team. Um, compared to just having just plain text, because that's really hard in terms of if you want to create you know, bullet points, you've got to come up with another method like a repeating table or a collection, um, and then put some styling on either side of that and, and allow your people to add individual items to create like bullet points, whereas the rich text control, I can just put them all into a section. It is added straight into my um, HTML variable here, um, and it, I don't need to do anything more than just put in, which is great. Um, so what we've done here is we've created the variable for us, so that's all the content I'm going to use to create my PDF. Very simply then, we just use the OneDrive um, connector, create um, oops, create file OneDrive. If I click on that guy, I'm taking the ID of the item um, and then converting it into HTML. So that's basically the ID of the SharePoint list item that I've just made. So I have to click that, it might be easier for people to see it. Um, and then at the end of that file name, I'm just doing .html and I'm creating um, a file content. Based of the file content is this variable above. So taking all the information, we first of all create an HTML file, and then we convert the file using the OneDrive connector, which is also a preview feature, which is also really good. And that's basically this, the ID of the item that's made, and just turn it into PDF. That is as simple as this to make a, a document or a PDF file from OneDrive. Um, and then all I do then is grab the same item. I've got a SharePoint library. Um, I could have another step here but to remove that item from OneDrive, I haven't put that in at this point. But basically, creating a file in SharePoint is the same as creating a file in a OneDrive. Um, you just need the site, the, the location inside of the site where it's going to be, and then the name and the content, which is the same as the two sections here. Um, and then all I have is a condition. Well, I've got a HD, uh, sorry, I've got a metadata column inside of my SharePoint list, which is saying, am I going to process an email or not? And if I say one, like it's an integer field, then I'm going to send an email, um, which just spits out um, an email to the person that made that item. Um, that could be someone else as well. We could do that differently. That could be the person that modified it uh, for everything created by it, because it may be different people. Uh, but basically, you can put your body content in, and then to attach a file into an Office 365 email in Flow, it's exactly the same as when you create a file. Basically, a file name, file content, and that will put an attachment into your item. Um, it's your email that you receive, so really easy. Um, and if obviously, if I'd say I don't want to create it, send an email, there's nothing, I don't need to put anything in the node part of my flow. So, to show you um, the cloning, um, sorry, continue. All right, so the clone resume uses uh, a Power Apps button, so it's a Power Apps um, trigger, uh, and then different actions off of that. And it's really small, basically. So I've basically got your standard Power Apps trigger, which you don't need to put anything else with. I do a get item, and I'm basically getting the item of um, the element that I just created. So I'll show you that in a second. Um, basically grab that. So that's basically asking Power Apps. And then, because I've got that, I can then take all the various elements of um, my um, Item, like when I'm cloning something, it already exists, right? So there's an ID, so I can do a lookup to get an ID of the, the original item and then take that item and then copy that. Um, and then just all I want to do is change the title so that I don't copy over the same item that I've already got existing. Um, and to do that, I just do um, a concat. I don't know if anyone uses expressions in Flow. Um, they're not too hard to get your head around. Um, but basically, you just put your grab information. As you build one out, you can add in your dynamic content into various areas of your expression if you want to. It makes it a lot easier than having to type it all. Um, so that's grabbed all the get item title by just putting in the dynamic content for title. And then to the right, um, I'm doing a concat. So I'm just pulling pieces of strings together, just a comma, and then the inverted commas, and then some text, which is that, that hyphen copy, which is what, um, oops, ABC, sorry, click that, um, when I create a copy. So one item. So I think I changed that one from copy to demo example, but that will be the one that we did. Um, and then if I, oops, so that's a blank text field there. Too many clicks, Rich. Um, clone them again. We'll get one that says Rich Burdess copy or demo example copy. Sorry, because it's taken the full name of the item. 
um, and then copied all of that. So that's that flow that we can see running, taking the title of the item and then adding copy to the end, so appending the word copy to it, um, which is cool. Um, that's just a, so this view here is just a, a plain text view of my resume. I don't need to do that. And if I want to edit it from here, I just click that. Now I'm in um, and can make changes. Again, it takes a second or two for the HTML to, to resume, or sorry, to, to present in those two fields, but it's not a major issue. Um, and then if I want to get rid of that example, for example, copy that. I'll just do a quick save. Not completely everything, sorry. And there we are, my items copied. Um, I could have adjusted the images a little bit. And what I'm doing is, uh, I should show you um, for this particular image. If you don't have an image, you end up being beta. Um, but for the image, uh, too much clicking. All right, so I've got an image called Darth Vader 1, which is that yellow one. Um, and so this is the lookup to, to look for the, um, and we've got kind of an error for that one at the moment, which I need to work out. It doesn't seem to be not show an error for me, but it's see, I can still see the image, so I'm not really sure what's going on there. Um, I'll check that out. Um, but basically what I'm doing is, does the 365 user have a photo? If they do, then show the photo. If they don't, then show beta. All right. I'm going to just click undo to move my spacing around a bit. There we go. The view, um, to view the PDF of the item, it's just use it to launch. Um, so when I launch, um, I go to my SharePoint library called Resumes, and then I grab the ID, um, which 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 why I've got the IDs. Each PDF's got a number, which is associated to the number in the SharePoint list, um, which is also associated with this data source. It's the same list, so it all works, and you'll always get a PDF of the item that you want to look at. Um, regular update is just basically navigate, and then on the on the edit CV page, we just use um, the gallery one dot selected to, to get the right item. Um, the clone is a SharePoint, sorry, is a uh, Powerhouse button. Um, and what I'm doing there is I am doing a response back um, to send um, the refresh control um, and then um, run the flow called clone resume. Um, and then on that particular item, that's the ID of the item I want to send, which is what um, the action in the flow is looking for. So that get item is looking for an ID. Um, and that, so I send it the ID from that particular item, this one. All right. Um, so yeah, in a nutshell, that's Power Apps has issues printing, uh, but it doesn't mean you can't create printable objects from it. Um, you just have to use things like Flow. There are third-party solutions as well that will help you with Flow uh, to print. Um, but creating a OneDrive item and then um, creating an HTML file and then turning it into a PDF is a really simple way um, to get your um, documents um, set up. So this guy here um, has the connectors. And just, yeah, it looks complicated, but that's just because we've got a whole bunch of um, parallel actions happening because they don't need to rely on each other to run. So that's what that branch is. It just means it's going to go a bit quicker. And then the sequential create, convert, and then to create another file, which is a copy of it. Um, and then send an email. So not too bad um, on that side. And the overall app spits out that PDF. Um, oops, I keep hovering over the thing, which isn't good. And then yeah, the app itself, um, the reports page, um, it's just going to show me how many people are in my team, how many people have got an up-to-date CV um, or resume, which is useful. Um, and I can count next to each person. Um, with an overall last, who was the who's what's who's got the oldest CV, um, and we could put in. I haven't put in much other things in there yet, but I'm just working through ideas on that. The piece. This is an um, example, after all. Um, create news, super simple. Again, it just takes me to um, the generic new form, which is going to talk to SharePoint. Um, I submit my data, create my item, um, and then save it or send and save. So this is where if I show you the patch statement, I should do that actually for SharePoint. Um, when I want to save a brand new item via a patch, I'm not using submit form, just using patch, and then reset in the form. So when you patch, just want the the word patch, the data source you're going to patch to, which is CV details, 
and then all of the columns that you want to patch to. The good thing about patches, you can you don't have to grab every column. You can grab specific ones that you want, um, and you can also patch multiple locations in the same sort of call. So I can patch here, I can patch another item, I could do um, a concurrent patch, so I could patch different data sources all at the same time and it'll just do it all together, um, or I can do it in a sequential order like here. And this last piece is um, where I can just um, hand roll um, a zero or a one um, in terms of do I want the email piece to happen. So when I click save, I get a zero. If I click on the send, sorry, save and send resume, that's where I process one. Um, and that then give me a true action in the flow, which will then send out an email. Um, so when you that's patching um, a new item, if I show you quickly, just um, oops, that. And if I show you patching, when you want to patch an existing item, it's a slightly different syntax. So if I take Brooks' resume and then just jump down here. Most of the patch statements the same. Excuse me. But what I need to do when I'm patching an existing item, I need to know what that item is that I'm going to patch to. Otherwise, I'm going to create a brand new item again. So when I want to work out what's the item I want to update, um, I patch again to my data source. And then I do I find the first item with a matching ID. And because I'm using a SharePoint list, uh, they're all going to have unique IDs. So I take the ID of the item I'm editing, and I compare it against find me the item in SharePoint, which has the same ID. And then I patch that item. So the only difference is you have when you want to update when you want to patch an existing item you just have that extra line of um, formula um, in your in drop down so i hope that's that's helped um, it's a cool little example of how you could use the new rich text um, control inside of power apps to do something that will give you a nice printable or a presentation type document at the end of your power app which can live um, in a location that's not necessarily in power apps it can go but you get attached to an rfp response it could be attached as a, a submitted form say had a health and safety form that needed to go through and needed to be not touched um, printed out because people still like paper um, printed out put somewhere um, on a board um, notifications and that sort of thing i could use power apps for that so yeah hope that's helped um i hope that's shown you how you can use perhaps um slightly different way um so yeah any questions just yeah ask away um look forward to your feedback